Guys, so I'm sitting here having a conversation with Sandy, and she was out walking in the woods, and she ran across a lone coyote. So that led to a conversation about coyotes being lone wolves? <laughs> coyotes being lone, what? Lone, loners? loners? Versus pack animals. And versus pack animals, and wolves. I know you've heard of lone wolf because, well, it's a term that people use. And that led me to access data that was new data. Oh, weird hair plopping out here. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, led me to data that showed me that originally coyotes and wolves on this planet were very, they, they were definitely, they were both pack animals. Wolves were bigger and their, their snouts were shorter, a little bit shorter. And coyotes were littler and they had longer snouts. And they were both pack animals, very definitely pack animals. And what happened was the indigenous peoples around those pack animal coyotes and wolves um, started out that they found them as babies and then they raised them and they got really attached to those, the coyotes and the wolves. And they developed, um, they pulled them in as what we consider dogs you know they had them as dogs like we have dogs and they really really liked that so what they would do is they would find these coyotes and wolves that were more even tempered and they bred them with each other and eventually over a very very long time that created what we now know of as dogs ish okay so as we go as they go back to oneness what will happen is the coyotes and the wolves will go back to being pack animals as we humans will and that same thing is true with birds all birds were well everything everything that came down birds always were in a flock um, all animals had their group whatever you want to call it flock pride pack herd whatever all animals had groups as did humans as they came down through towards 3D. And then what happened is all these groups were busted up. They were busted up, busted up. And that especially happened in World War II. And that was true with the, the young men went off around the planet. And a lot of them got married before they left, if you'll remember. And then they'd go and be gone an extended period of time. And they'd meet another woman. And they'd fall in love with her. And then the relationship back here with this marriage. Anyway, that's how the packs of humans were broke up. Humans packs were really broke up last. Now I know a lot of people say it was because people quit following religions but that's just hogwash. It's just the nature of getting to 3D. Everything had to be busted apart to be as far away from oneness and source as possible to reach the lowest levels of 3D. Now as we move back up that's going to start going the other direction. So all of the animals and the birds and everything will start going back into groups again, including humans. Okay, so Sandy brought up, this is the question. When you go back into oneness in a group, when you're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be judging and there's not supposed to be any attachments, how do you do that? How do you form a group with no attachment? Well, it's simple. It's all based on need. When you go back to oneness, you form a group, but there's no need. You don't need the group. The group doesn't need you, and that's what humans are used to. They get into a group. You marry somebody because you need them. You need to be loved. You need to be wanted. You need to be taking care of somebody. Well, all of that will go away. So you will form groups without need. They will just flow. The group will feel right. Now, when you're within a group where there's no need, there's no pressure, there's no resistance, there's no panic. If somebody starts to leave the group, you go, ah, they're supposed to leave the group. No big deal. There's not this crazy need attachment that causes all the problems. So when you co go back to oneness, there's a natural flow of going into a group that is right for you at that time. And if you leave a group, then it's right for you at that time. And in that group, the group knows it, you know it, nobody cares. They wish you well if you go to your next group, knowing that you're going to a group that is better for you in the moment. Now, you may 
turn around and come back to the group that you just left. Again, no big deal. You're accepted wholly because there is a flow with things, a knowing of things, that everything is exactly as it should be. No need. No, oh my God, that person doesn't love our group. Oh no, what are we going to do? It's not like that. It's not like that. There's just a natural flow of things. If you don't get rid of the attachments and the need and the fear and the judgment, you'll never feel what I just described. I want to be with groups that are as I just described. I won't settle for anything less. I can feel the judgment, the attachment, the neediness, and I'm not into that. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It's just a different kind. Those kind of things are very much alive and well in fourth dimension. It's just, as I've said before, it's not where I'm going. I'm going to 5D, and that is why. Did that explain it? Okay, that explained it. All right, that's it for this one. Love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.